Hello friend, this is Zalok. Welcome to my 51th video. Here we will learn how to configure load balancer, F5 load balancer, LTM box. Uh, in 50th video, you must have seen like we have activated this box, the process like how to activate this box and uh, pre, uh, uh, you can say it's a pre-provisioning uh, we have done on these two boxes. So, uh, if you don't see then i would suggest you to go there and watch first video and if you like then subscribe this video so uh, today we will learn how to configure active in the standby box in this f5 load balancer in last class uh, we have done i mean i'll start from there itself we have done this uh, basic setup uh, we have activated this two boxes here if you see so they are activated now and we can see all features here so uh, let's start configuring active and standby box uh, so for let me show you uh, the di diagram where you can easily understand what ip we are using here this is uh, our management ip 10.12.1.5 and 6 is secondary ip and we will we'll create uh, one floating IP but uh, I'm not mentioning here floating IP as of now so I'll uh, add it uh, in uh, some time and I'll show you how to create a fl floating IP self IP is like uh, interface IP address and uh, floating IP is called uh, virtual IP address you can say VIP for all user let's suppose this user is uh, having a uh, one uh, application running on this box so we configure gateway as floating ip address and this gateway will be floating ip address so that this uh, request will go to f5 and then it will process the request so uh, we have already configured checkpoint and asa and in one class we ha i have configured palo alto also but we will cover later on palo alto and asa more uh, we have done checkpoint kind of thing. So let's uh, start configuring this internal LAN and LAN in the sense like uh, this is behind DMG and we are going to set up F5 here. So let's uh, start for uh, configuring F5. You need to have all IP and all you need to have uh, VLAN information and all ready with you. Okay, so I have already written IP and all so here you can see like a first box name we have given like f501 target 20.com and uh, secondary box is using f52 target 20.com this is our domain target 20 we are having active directory with this name and we are using this ip so let's start configuring vlan first and we'll tag accordingly so for configuring active standby box you need to configure vlan on this box first and for that you need to go to management sorry uh, network and then here you can see one option vlan so we will configure on both box so this is primary and this one is secondary so we'll go here and select VLAN then create option is coming here you can see this create VLAN so we need to have a three VLANs over here three VLANs one is for HA one is for external and one will be used for internal VLAN so let's configure three VLANs I am giving like name like uh, first I am going to configure external VLAN you can give here description and then just tag it to uh, I mean whatever VLAN you want to tag you can tag it here and then you need to select untag I am going to but you need to have documented all those things because uh, like uh, there would not be any confusion. So I am on secondary uh, primary box here 10.12.1.5 and I am going to configure this VLAN 
so our vlan id is i mean i tagged with a 2510 for this external okay and uh, interface will be untagged and this is uh, for 1.1 1 .1. so add it here and then finish same way we will configure for internal and ha vlan and we will do it on both boxes so first i am going to do on primary box and then i'll go one by one so it is in progress so external vlan is created now we need to create ha and then internal vlan so first step is like you need to create a vlan okay so our vlan is untagged with interface i need to check interface so it should be predefined like what you are going to do so this is for two uh, i have given name like this you can give any vlan id so i am going to give 20 for this uh, ha vlan and interface is 1.3 so i need to select here 1.3 and just untagged and th this option is coming like uh, mtu value so this is uh, this is by default 1500 if you want to increase you can here you can increase here so do it and just do finish flow control with we are not going to configure anything here So we need to create one more VLAN for internal user. So create same way we need to create here. So just select internal and then give ID VLAN ID and tagged with interface 1.2 and just add it here. So 1.2. Yes, it is 1.2 and this is our VLAN so go and just finish it here meanwhile uh, we have done uh, this three uh, vlan creation is done on first box so go to secondary box and do the same thing but uh, yes yeah, same way we need to configure here vlan will be same but ip we can change it from self ip when we configure that one then next step would be like self ip creation so i'll show you like how to do first we need to create a vlan so i am going to configure external vlan and id would be 10 interface 1.1 .1 for external add it here same way we need to uh, do okay so yes this is 1.1 uh, 10 1 sorry 1.1 1 .1 is here for external so just keep in mind like uh, whatever you are giving this it should be why not this option i need to select only two inter okay uh, sorry uh, we have already added here sorry i thought like i have not added so if you add it here so you'll see like 1.1 1 .1 is our external vlan and just go and finish and then again you need to configure vlan ha because we need we required three vlans and then we'll go for next same way uh, we need to configure let me pause this video because it will take some time to update this is done need to create one more vlan for ha and then internal vlan ID is 20 and then interface is 3 and just untag. Let me check. Yes, 3 0. Uh, this is a 2 0 is VLAN ID and interface is 3 dot. Okay. Add it here. And then we need to configure one more VLAN.
need to create third VLAN that is for internal user. I need to check interface. I think 1.2 is for internal. Yes. This one. Then add it here. If you have any questions, just add uh, uh, in comment section, whatever you want to know. If I know, then I'll definitely uh, tell you next lab. So here you can see like we have created this three VLAN here on primary box and just on secondary box. Same way, same VLAN, VLAN ID will be same, interface will be same. And then we need to configure self IP address for each interface. So go to self IP address and here is option where you can create self ip address for each interface so here you can give name self ip for external interface i am going to configure and ip will be 172.5 i am on i am on primary box so this is 175 sorry 172.170.5 and this will be our external VLAN. One more thing here, you can select uh, default allow because if it is a none, then they will not communicate and then th there would be uh, some problem. You will not able to configure HA. So click on finish. Come on. So <clears throat> I'm going to configure H uh, HA IP address. Same way you need to do here. You need to select name. I mean, you need to create here name, self IP address, interface name. This is the interface name. And then you need to configure this HAIP. We are using as per our lab. This is our HAIP primary box IP. And then you need to select VLAN, what we have configured for internal. Uh, sorry, this is for HA. And then press finish. So now two is created. Now this is for internal interface. IP will be R, this one. I would suggest you to check diagram, whatever I have shared there. This diagram, because if you are getting confused, go there and just think what IP we are giving. This is the first box. So I, I have given this 172.17.0.5 for external interface. This will be a for management we have already configured. And this is our internal IP address. And uh, this you can see here, we have given for HA 10.10.10.1 for the first box and second box is using two. So allow default and then finish so now we have configured this three self ip address for each interface so go to a secondary box and configure same thing on same way same thing not same ip address i mean ip address would be changed as for our diagram so this is secondary box we are using 172.17. 0 0.6 for external internal is using 192 168 2.6 and ha is using 10.10.10.2 .10 so build configure as per our diagram come on so first i am going to configure external self ip address and our ip will be 172.17.0.6 and subnet mask this is one and vlan is external and here you can allow default 
so press finish and then configure IP self IP address for HA interface click on create select IP I mean interface name and here you can give two and inter this one is our subnet mask and we are configuring for HA and then this would be default so same way we are doing as we have done on a primary box uh, in this video I'll show you like how to configure active and standby configuration on I mean active standby configuration on FI box LTM box and then we will move further like uh, how it works how uh, F5 load balancer works I'll show you and I'll show you troubleshooting part also how cur cur command work and SSL dump so many things are there I'll con cover one by one and uh, show tag so many things are there through that you can easily troubleshoot this f5 issue so we have we have to create this internal self ip address and this is our ip for secondary box and vlan is internal So we have done self IP address creation. Uh, two things we have already done. First part was uh, VLAN creation, which we have already done. And then now it is completing self IP address configuration. So let me show you here what I have written. So self IP address configuration is done. Okay. So now we need to do this thing. So in device management, so many things we have to do go to this and click whatever you have configured box and create a connectivity and just select it let me show you then you will be easily understand so self ip creation is done <clears throat> so now go to device management and then device It's very easy to configure active standby box. So this is our self IP, self IP address is coming here. Whatever name we have given for this box, it is reflecting here, it's stating like it is a self. So click on that. So now you'll see here option sync. Click on sync, config sync. Here you need to select HA. This will be our uh, sync. I mean, this is a sync interface. So we need to select this one so that all connection will be synced. I mean, between two, two boxes, all connection will be transferred. Update it here. So now it is updated. Go to network failover. So uh, this is a network failover configuration. So here we need to add network failover. So in this way, like uh, we can select HA first. So network failover means let me show you and define like uh, how it works. If we are going to do sync failover, then only this interface will be point of failure like if it goes down then it, uh, this fi box act li uh, like uh, this is active primary will become active and secondary will become active so uh, network will be like uh, let's suppose this uh, this is a user i mean this is server and uh, is a processing sub request so it may go down it may goes i mean it may go down uh, for that connection so connection will be lost if uh, there is no connectivity between them and they'll start uh, passing connection to out uh, out of user let's suppose this user is accessing some url will come through this one and uh, then 
this uh, server will be confused like where to send the traffic okay so this thing and your floating ip address will be working on a round and robin basis so definitely your connection will be lost that's the reason we have selected uh, high availability interface or i would suggest you to do network failover with internal interface or you can select your management interface here internal or management internal means uh, all internal will uh, user will be i mean in a sync let's suppose this uh, cable or maybe uh, this this is having unplugged or something happened there would be some issue with between, between this two i mean devices wire uh, went wrong so uh, it works as a failover using network connectivity so it will fail over with uh, from this uh, server connection okay so there would not be outage because there is a two point of failure first let's suppose directly connected wire went wrong so um, network connection will uh, serve the same thing what it is sync interface is doing so our sync interface will be internal now and uh, this is directly connected it means there is a two point of failure now so i would suggest you to uh, configure for either management or lan so both interface will not go down together so select it here as a management i am selecting same config configuration you need to go on secondary box and you need to perform same thing so go to device management device and then you need to select let, let it become the self ip self uh, name i have given here then one more thing i forgot to do like let it be complete let me show you multicast fail over multicast if you are not selecting then uh, unicast will happen you must have understanding what unicast and multicast if you don't understand then go to youtube and learn how it is multicast and unicast uh, work let me uh, give you some uh, brief here let's suppose this uh, this uh, traffic between this two uh, ltm box connection traffic i am talking about so some uh, if we have configured unicast then it will work one to one connection so unicast means one to one communication okay and multicast means one to many so if you are not configuring multicast here then uh, this link will send one to one means unicast so it will not understand this internal link so uh, failover will not work that's the reason i am doing multicast so that this interface will send hello packet to uh, this uh, interface from this way and this way as well okay so we are doing a network failover also so multicast using multicast will so both packet both way it will go so just update it here same way you need to perform here go to sync config sync option select ha and update it and then you need to go for network failover okay and select similar interface what you have configured there in first box okay otherwise it will not work failover will work but once uh, let me show you once this failover uh, connection lost you will not able to hit this because it is mismatching your configuration is mismatching uh, this box will send traffic to uh, management and this will send to lan so it would create a problem so that i am suggesting you to configure in right way and select right interface here in network failover okay add it here we have selected ha and then uh, we have selected internal sorry not internal uh, we have selected uh, management interface here as a failover link secondary failover link we can say here come on so 
add management as well management ip should be here because we have selected in first box as a management okay sorry uh, yes we we are having this ip address for management press finished and then select multicast i described uh, like uh, how multicast work so you need to select multicast address as well so updated need to select enable multicast so if someone is asking multicast address so this is a multicast address 224.0.0.245 okay it works on this port so we have done basic configuration here think this is done okay this is updated now yes enable go to uh, if you want to make uh, this box five box as a secondary then you need to do configuration from here now or if you want to make this as an active box then you need to configure now from here so what i am going to do i'll make this box uh, this five box as a secondary so how to do go to device trust select peer list okay so in peer list you need to add this device information we need to retrieve from this box there should be connectivity between this two box primary and secondary because we have plugged cable and it is communicating just ping and just check it okay in your scenario so our management ip for second secondary box is 10.12.1.6 you need to give management ip address sorry uh, username and password administrator uh, administrative username and password here and just retrieve device information click on this there should be connectivity uh, between these two device when you are going to configure this okay before that you need to check connectivity i would suggest you to go and ping and just test it okay so we are having connectivity so that we have got all information even device name also it is coming here so finish it here so for now it is it will take time uh, for now uh, this is this box is acting like a standalone box and working as active here same way you will see this box is uh, it will uh, connect uh, just a minute this this is will be active and standalone okay come on it will come in some time where this is not disconnected uh, this is a running box we are getting all information let me check if it is rebooted or what okay this box is running domain trust only if you see we are going to create trust this box is also okay trust to domain uh, only so go here we are in see this is active showing active now in sync okay so this is in sync and showing active if you come on this box this is also sync and this is active in sync because we have already initiated connection i mean between these two we have added peer here 
and they are communicating to each other we done finished okay so this is done so go to device group now we need to say uh, to this device like like what will be our group name and then we can give here <coughs> you can create here name so name you can give anything like target 20 so target 20 is our name group name what we are going to configure and then select sync fail over here if you want to add description add it here and select this two devices one is primary one is secondary you need to add it here so they are in member and here if you want network failover definitely i want uh, network failover i told you like how to do and then automatic sync and if you want to sync your box automatically you need to select this option and then update so usually we don't do because if you are making any mistake in standby box it will reflect to primary as well and uh, this is a save on automatic sync uh, when it will sync then it will automatically save to primary or secondary so this is a full sync so we don't need full sync because yeah, let's suppose a thousand of whip is there on secondary box and yeah, you are going to create one more so here what you do if you select this option then all whip will be updated again so it will process as a i mean what you call say you can say like uh, all uh, configuration will go to primary or if you don't select here then only incremental whatever con you have configured now that will be updated there so finish it here so only network failover you need to select so here you will see some changes changes like uh, we need to sync initial sync we need to create from here showing inactive it will show a uh, standby this will become a standby and this will be our primary box once it is done okay see here active active we're waiting for initial sync okay continue and then we have almost done here we are almost done so we have created the group so only we need to do sync from this standby to active so go here so here awaiting initially sync initial sync okay select this self ip address here self means uh, your devices where you have made uh, changes so we are on primary box primary in the sense uh, f501 we are on this box this will become a standby so here you can see some option sync to uh, sync device to group okay so we will uh, sync from here to group group means this one group means we can create more uh, uh, number of uh, f5 and uh, that will uh, become like a backup let uh, let's suppose in our scenario only two f5 is there if you want then you can increase uh, number of f5 until it goes eight it uh, uh, f5 support uh, active and standby here if you it will come a uh, third device then that will become a backup device okay so we need to sync select this option and then sync if you are syncing from uh, sync group sync group means this secondary device to this one so we are not going to do this one because we have done changes on primary box so sync it from here sync option is coming select self device and then go and click on sync it takes some time 
oh time time value will come here once it is updated it will take some time because we are going to do first time so now you can see here login again sorry this become active just a minute let me check okay we have selected first then second okay this is in sync so our lab is successfully done what the thing is like we have synced from group that the reason it become active and this box will become standby i think device group we have configured only one so 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 so, so it is showing active wait so we have done one mistake we have done traffic group we need to create otherwise it will become active active okay okay while configuring this we need to select this traffic group member otherwise it will become active and this is also active Okay. No device group was okay. What? In sync. Okay. It is taking time. That's it. I have not done any changes. Okay. So device group is okay because by default device just. Just let me show you this one traffic group is like uh, by default is created one only so it takes some time to come stand uh, stand alone I mean sorry uh, stand by and this is the active box so this one become active I told you like uh, this way you can configure it here so in next lab we will configure uh, this one uh, virtual server and all for now this is okay we have done successfully this lab so one, uh, in your lab also if you are going to do this lab then you will definitely face this issue uh, it takes time it uh, once it is updated it will take more than five minutes sometime to come a standby because we are on VMware sometime it happens like so this class is done so you can uh, go uh, and configure same way uh, you need not to check anything i mean change anything so uh, so this this way you can see like this is uh, online standby and this is inactive it is not processing request okay here you see green in sync and here you uh, you can see like uh, this is online serving connection okay so this way you can configure active standby failover so in active active uh, nothing is there only you need to create uh, some uh, let me show you this traffic group you need to configure one more and then you can configure active active i'll show you later on and we'll do this thing also but uh, as per our requirement this is done so i think i think i think that we are almost done but one thing i missed here uh, that is floating ip we need to configure floating ip now for floating ip go to secondary box mostly we do changes on secondary box and then uh, we do uh, i mean sync from here to there so go here select self ip address how to configure floating i'll tell you select self ip address it will come floating is nothing but it's virtual ip address virtual gateway 
for internal interface create sorry uh, yes uh, we are in interface only self ip address go there and from here you can create floating ip address so you can give floating ip address what we have given name like this is called floating floating internal and external so 10 i'm give, going to give here so give name like external floating ip address this is a virtual ip address for external interface so external we are using 172.17.0.10 in our case we will use here <coughs> this is external interface select default allow and here you have to think like what traffic group it will use so this is non floating ip if you configure this way and if you go finish so it will become a self ip address if you are going to finish so this is non floating ip address is called self ip address if you want to configure floating ip address for traffic group one then you need to select this floating and then finish so our floating uh, external floating ip address is created so floating will work if if we have configured external so firewall will understand like there is a only one ip floating ip and it will communicate with this floating ip only let's suppose this device is active secondary device in our case our secondary device is active so it will serve connection on active device only and this will send to floating ip address this is virtual ip address and then virtual ip address will send to active box okay so this is done need to configure floating ip address for uh, uh, that ip also i mean internal ip same way you need to configure it will take time so our floating ip address uh, address is configured on secondary box see here changes is pending so we'll create uh, for internal floating ip address so this external is done so for internal we are you going to use this series dot 10 ip and then you need to select your subnet and vlan and then here allow default and then here floating ip address floating group we have only one and then press finish and then just go and update it to primary device so your uh, this floating ip address will be working So now you can check your connectivity and all so this should be working i hope uh, um, i have given my hundred percent here so if you like this video go and like and subscribe uh, if you have any query any question you can put there in uh, comment section okay okay this is already exists okay we have already configured this oh, 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 oh we did one mistake i think ip we have given once uh, this ip is given to that was my mistake okay see no 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 sorting ip address group one correct mostly we configured floating ip address this is called virtual ip address and need to configure here as a internal internal not external internal floating actually name i have given self that's the reason Ten. 
similar name it will not take so go here select floating allow default and then finish it will take some time i think we have crossed oh wait so here it is done external floating internal floating we have this one is internal floating ip address and this is external floating so now all internal user will be accessing this gateway it will work like gateway for them so that's it for this class thank you oh sorry uh, <laughs> i forgot to uh, this sync this box to primary sync this configuration to primary if you go to primary box you will not see those configuration because i have not synced them so if you go here what we have configured network self ip address is it should not be coming because we have done changes on uh, standby and it will not be serving any connection on floating ip address until or unless you synced so he, here you can see only three ip which we have configured but here it would be like more so go select your self ip address self and then sync it will take few second now <laughs> so now it is that uh, synced this box is in synced go here we'll do partitioning and all in next class for now i think we have already crossed this uh, saving limit i mean recording limit it should not go more than 46 minute so i think this box uh, it should come now now in uh, active box all configuration what we have done in primary box it should be coming here so now you can see this floating ip address as, as well thank you thank you for watching this video i am going to upload this on youtube if you like this video just like it and subscribe thank you for watching my video i'll be uploading next video next day thank you